So I don't know about you, but one of the kindest things that anyone could do for me in this season of life is helping out with chores, right? And we have a printable for that. Hey, and welcome. As usual, I am super pumped that you are here. If this is your first time here, I'm Amanda, and I really kind of tend to be either a little too extra sometimes, or on the flip side, I also like to choose to let things be easy. And both of these things have their place. I hope that I can support you in whatever it is that you are doing by sharing some cool freebies, some ideas, some encouragement, all that good stuff. So be sure to like and subscribe so I can continue to sprinkle some awkward inspiration into your days. Our nature study lesson for this week had us wondering what plants eat. We gathered up a few leaves from the backyard to take a closer look at the parts of the plant that converts sunlight into food for plants. So we found a few weedy kind of leaves growing in the grass, uh, an old one that fell from a tree, and a couple of nice ones from our strawberry plants actually. And then we took them inside to really look more closely at the parts and the textures of the leaves. Now for the leaf rubbing activity, I broke out my handy dandy like 1980s fashion plates toy. I have a few older sisters actually, so this thing might be from the 70s, I don't know. But we used this relic of my childhood to rub a crayon piece that is probably likely older than I am over a couple of leaves to make prints of the leaves, the shapes, the textures, and this was really an no way necessary for making leaf rubbings. I'm not entirely sure why I did this, and I think that it actually might have made it just a little more difficult somehow. I don't know. I thought it would add a little something to the activity. Our first math and science activity was a classic, so like another kind of throwback to my childhood and hopefully to everyone's childhoods, but I was initially tempted to use our play couch for this activity, like a nugget. We have one, it's called a cozy couch. And because that's like just what it's for, right? To build things and we build with it all the time. And I wanted this activity to sort of stand out a bit to be something different and special for the school lesson. So I grabbed a big quilt and a couple of chairs from the dining room and some clips and clamps that I found laying around. And we put some other blankets along with this big beach towel on the back of the couch just to add some support back there to keep it from caving in. And we brought in a few pillows, a sheepskin rug, and books, of course, because that's what this was for, creating a cozy reading nook. I had to get a Target grocery order going at some point, so this kind of shifted into a cozy movie watching tent instead, and it was really nice. Like, they sat and snacked and watched The Secret Life of Pets for the billionth time while I ordered groceries. And we still got to sit there together and snuggle and have it be special, even though I had to put some of my attention toward that for a little while. And it actually ended up staying up for a couple of days. They really liked it. So we just left it up until it started to, you know, look a little rough and we got sick of having zero space to move around in our living room. We also did the little finger play a few times through the week and I just sang it as a little song that I made up and they really liked this one. And I think that the song part made it kind of catchy, you know? So she sang it by herself here and there and even made this little cardboard book to go along with it. So I think that this will definitely be one to remember in the fall. We checked out a new artist this week, Paul Klee, and we studied his picture called Flower Myth. And I personally don't really love this painting, but Lucy sure did. She is very much into red right now, and I think that she really liked having a new kind of style and subject matter, like all the angles, the little things hidden throughout the pictures. It was very different than the pictures that we have been studying over the past few weeks. So we studied this together for a little while, and she pointed out shapes that she noticed, colors, moon, a bird, a seed, and she insisted on having the picture up on my phone directly in front of her while she used ripped red paper and other art supplies to make her own picture. And it took lots of time and focus and she was just there for it. She had a lot of fun with this one. And at one point I took my phone back so that I could take some video and I printed it out for her on our little sticker printer thing here, thinking that it might be cool to put this one in the corner of her version of the picture and just kind of have them side by side. But she really wanted to stick it up in her dollhouse homeschool room instead. And I'm gonna have to remember that now that we started sticking things in there, I think that she might wanna put anything and everything that we print in there. 
There were actually three activities listed in art this week, and the last one was a triangle freeze dance, and this was probably the biggest hit of them all. We made lots of triangles out on the front kind of side sidewalk, I guess, for this, and then I had my husband play and pause some music on his phone as the girls danced around. So when the music stopped, we yelled freeze, and she had to jump on the closest triangle and tell me what color it was. And this was a lot of fun. Like she told other people about this, like it was that interesting that she wanted to share it with others. And it was simple, you know, like how cool to have something so simple be so enjoyed, right? She really liked it. And we actually had to make them stop to have dinner. She just wanted to keep going and it was requested again a day or two later, but some rain had already washed it off. So we're definitely gonna have to do it again sometime soon. We also had a new composer this week, Rossini, and we really just took some time to listen to some of his stuff as we had breakfast and really just generally went about our day. We talked about the instruments that we heard, and this is actually sort of becoming a habit now after doing it for so long. It's something that's just sort of naturally coming up. And we noticed that his songs, what we heard anyway on our A-L-E-X-A, -E they seem to have a lot more singing as a part of the music than a lot of the other composers that we've listened to so far. And then we also watched the YouTube video that was suggested in the parent guide, and that's it. You know, you can really just kind of knock this one out as you're going about your day, as you're having breakfast, as you're driving, as you're doing chores. And speaking of chores, We focused on involvement in household chores this week for kindness and connectivity, and I kind of love it, right? Like as a primary chore doer around here, helping out is probably one of the kindest things that anyone could do for me at this point in time, right? Like that's just where I am, so I'll take it. And it also did give us a chance to connect as well, you know, like doing these things together and celebrating little accomplishments. Now, like so many things that we've done so far in this curriculum, we didn't really have to do anything out of the ordinary for this lesson. But really, again, it was just more about bringing attention to the things, or in this case, the activities that have always been there, the things that we do anyway. So instead of just breezing through chores, which I do like to involve the kids in when I can, like it's actually one of my kind of like secret weapons. So if they're having a crazy day or just have a lot of energy or I need to get some stuff done for whatever reason, I can just spray some kitchen spray stuff. Like I make a solution of just dish soap and water and I can just spray them in the cabinets and give them some towels and they'll be occupied for a while. They love helping. And I always recommend this to people that are searching for toy or activity ideas to keep their toddlers busy through the day. Like you don't need to go buy stuff, like put down your target cart, just give them a wall to wash or some towels to fold. And sometimes it is helpful to have a visual or something tangible, you know, to go along with an activity. So I made up a little chore chart that I laminated and stuck up on the fridge along with a dry erase marker. And let me tell you, this took something that was already kind of fun to a whole new level. And now that I say that, as I hear it coming out of my mouth, I feel like I might be hyping this too much. Like, don't get too excited, right? They're just chores. It's not like I told her we're going to Disneyland or anything, but it did give her this new sense of excitement, right? And pride and ownership over the responsibilities that we listed on the chart. And that is the free printable for this week. So you can go ahead and download that from the link down below. And as usual, if you get it and you use it and you like it, I would so, so very much appreciate an Instagram tag at Foursquare Schoolhouse so that I can see it in action. Our read together story for this week is just about as old as the dirt that this kid plants his carrot in, but it was very well received around here and I had to read it multiple times in a row actually. Like the story is super simple, not a lot of words or fluff, so it was a quick read. We talked about the message in this story and how important it is to believe in yourself and in the things that are important to you, even when other people might not understand or might not have the same faith that you do. And, and I really like that the simplicity of this story made that message really kind of pop. So we did a little something different for the sensory bin activity that was in the curriculum. And by different, I guess, I mean, we just completely scrapped it kind of. I just really didn't feel like going out to buy a bunch of black beans or sand or whatever. We didn't 
have that quantity of those things to properly do something with with carrots i don't know to put them in it unless i cut off like some little stubby guys so we just did something entirely different with what i had on hand that day and ultimately i really really like how it turned out and i'm really happy that we kind of called this audible so i just took a box that we had laying around for recycling and poked some holes in the top with scissors and then i used a sharpie to put some fencing and like a little garden sign on the front i left one side open so that we could see right inside and then i pushed the carrots down into the holes so that the greens were still sticking out on the top you know just like they would be in the dirt in a real garden and I think that this was actually a cool project and a cool visual to sort of illustrate which parts of the plant are above ground and which are underground and she had fun pulling them out taking bites feeding her rabbit Margot, and we had a couple of little ones left over that we ended up putting in the backyard for our little resident rabbit family and we have a ring doorbell that is motion activated so we set it back there by the fire pit and we had like a billion different things that popped up on our phones uh, because there is activity in the backyard and as it turns out it was initially taken by a raccoon and raccoons as we've learned in the past don't seem to really enjoy produce so the raccoon grabbed it down and then trashed it and then later on a groundhog actually came and ate it and then the second carrot the next night the same thing kind of happened a raccoon came and took it and then was like nah, I don't like carrots and tossed it uh, and that carrot I think is still in our yard and I have no idea where our bunny family is but if you have a ring camera and some produce this could be a fun activity. For this week's kitchen classroom seed activity, we broke open some green beans as we were making dinner one night. And then the next morning we stuck the little beans into a Ziploc bag with a wet paper towel. So we taped this bag up in the dining room window so that they could see it more easily. And also because it gets a lot more light in there than it does in the kitchen. Uh, then we just kind of checked on it every day. Like most of the time there wasn't much action at first, but then they started to sprout a little bit after probably most of the week had passed and they're still up there and they've sprouted a good bit. So we've been keeping an eye on them and we're going to probably sometime soon transfer them into a little pot with some soil to see if we can grow some more beans. I hope that you all have an awesome week and that you have lots of helpful little hands helping you out around the house. Make sure that you grab that free printable down below, like and subscribe to be notified when the next video posts and come back again next week for some summer solstice treats and a parade that more closely resembled a train wreck. I'll see you then.